today we're going to do a watercolor and uh, I've been showing you a picture here before the uh, startup and I uh, hope you like it though they're basically black and white uh, images of, a, of the same photo one is done in a portrait format and one is done in a landscape format and we're going to try to do both of those today I think we'll do uh, do them very quickly so uh, hopefully it won't take a long time to do these uh, th this painting but I want to show you some techniques with uh, big brushes using bristle brushes <clears throat> for for background and blending and uh, I want to show you how the perspective not the perspective but really the uh, I guess you'd call it the, the focal point of the image really changes when you go from a portrait format to a landscape format. So we'll be talking about that a little bit. Um, the photo we're using today is called Montana Pond. It's provided by uh, a, a, a person on the Photos for Artists Facebook page and her name is um, Joan McDaniel and I appreciate that. I appreciate these photos that people put out there for us to use freely with no restrictions and no copyright restrictions. Um, so I want to go over to my computer and just show you a couple things I did with the image um, and I'll come right back here and we will start painting um, as soon as I get back. So hold on. Okay, here's the image that uh, Joan McDaniel uh, put on uh, Photos for Artists Facebook page. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much black and white. Uh, shades of gray and uh, so I took that and I thought well maybe that would be an interesting one to try to work on the focal point there is a mountain way back there in the middle almost right in the middle of the, the, the image um, you can't even hardly see it so I'm going to try to make sure we see that mountain to get some depth and uh, and also then I needed to crop it to make it fit our 11 by 14 format so I cropped it by uh, this so now this is a 14 uh, by 11 I'm sorry, 11 by 14, 11 wide by 14 tall. Um, and I also then changed it and cropped it to make a landscape version out of it, which took a lot of the sky out and took a lot of the water out. <clears throat> so you can see now in this one, the, uh, the, the, the trees are more the focal point than the water. In the previous one, um, if I go back to that, you notice that the, the biggest space, use of space in this particular image is the water. So this is one with the water and reflections will probably be more dominant than the middle ground and the background. But uh, when we go to the landscape version, the water becomes less dominant in terms of square inches of paper, if you want to call it that. Um, and uh, it will have a whole different look. And we're also gonna, not going to paint it in black and white, by the way. We're going to use colors. I try, may make one a fall scene and make one a winter scene. I haven't decided. I guess I'll decide when I get to the easel. <laughs> Anyway, I did a uh, value map of the landscape version to sort of make the darker sky uh, a little bit darker, at least mid-value, and then uh, the trees a little bit lighter than that, the foreground a little bit lighter than that, and then the water uh, a little bit darker than the sky. So that's really all I wanted to show you with how I manipulated those photos and the thinking it sort of went behind it. <clears throat> and uh, I also want to ask you, I, I put it in the text here, but I would like to ask you to... Uh, take the time to fill out the survey that I have um, and uh, I'm doing some planning for 2020 and I'd like to get your input uh, since you are some of my most loyal watchers um, I would like to uh, have you give me your feedback and tell me what you like what you don't like and give me some comments on that so all right I'm going to go over to the easel now we'll get going on this Okay, so here we are. This is my uh, <clears throat> palette, and uh, I've got the, uh, the brushes here, and you notice I don't have a whole lot of brushes here. I really have these big uh, Sterling Edwards brushes. I have a large, a medium, and a small. These are all bristle brushes. It's uh, very unusual for watercolor painters to use bristle. Uh, but these basically have uh, very short bristles and they make some wonderful effects in terms of uh, blending and making grasses and that sort of thing. And so we're going to try to make this composition be a big brush format. I may use two of these. I don't think I'm going to use the large because it's probably too big for this 11 by 14 paper. Uh, but I'm definitely going to use the other two and I may use the rigger. And uh, I may or may not use one of my flats, but if I use a flat, I'm going to use this uh, one inch flat here. So 
Um, that's, uh, that's the brushes we're going to be using, and I'm going to try to stick to that if I can, and uh, not, not violate it. I don't have a sketch on here yet, so we're going to put a, a very loose, easy sketch on here uh, in just a second. I want to go around the palette and tell you the colors just to make sure you remember what they are. Um, so here we have in this corner Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Yellow Lemon. So that's our set of colors. These are all Holbein colors. They're very beautiful uh, watercolors, very transparent. Um, they're fun to paint with. And uh, so I hope you're going to uh, like this. So let's get going, get our uh, self-oriented here. I want to zoom in on the, uh, the paper and get it aligned so we have it, uh, so you can see all of it. And get it uh, over here so you can see all the palette, you can see all of the paper. And uh, I'm noticing I have a big white spot up here on this, uh, I guess it's over here is where, where you see it. I'm not sure which one of my lights is doing that, but uh, we'll have to work around that for now. Um, all right, <clears throat> let's get going. Um, in this particular uh, portrait version, portrait means it's always taller than it is wide. So that came because most portraits were always done in a taller, a longer format like that. So we're going to do it two ways, portrait and we're going to do it landscape. I have another uh, paper underneath this, and uh, as soon as I finish this one, I'll rip this off and we'll do the th same thing in landscape. All right, so here I have about my horizon line. You see, you don't want your horizon line at the middle. You want to have it somewhere above or below. In this particular one, the horizon line is about right in here somewhere. Right out in here, we have this, you can't even see it hardly, but there's a mountain back there. It sort of goes up over this way. Um, down about right here, we have the, the f back side of this uh, pond, the Montana pond. And uh, so I want to kind of make it look like that. We have a whole bunch of trees. Again, I'm going to try to simplify this a lot to uh, minimize the amount of uh, work we have to do with the brushes. We're just going to try to get the effect uh, of this. We have some, uh, I don't know, some bushes and stuff in here. It looks like there's a, maybe a log or something laying over here. At least I'll call it a log. Uh, we have some other trees that are out here. Um, I want to make sure this is my mountain. It's pretty far back, so I'm going to keep it small compared to the foreground, middle ground objects. Um, over here, we got some other, there's actually three big trees, but I don't want to put another tree over that mountain. I'm going to leave that show through, so I'm going to edit out some of these trees, and we'll be putting some of these over here, a few more like this, maybe. Um, and something like this. And then we may have a few more sitting around here. We have a little bank, and then we're going to try to reflect these down in the water as they would be, right? Got to make sure we got the angle right. If it, if it looks like this on the, uh, what you're looking at, the reflection is going to be the same angle going the other way. So we want to make sure we have these sort of at that same angle here. This one is going that way, so it's going to reflect this way. So I hope you can see that. It looks a little light on my monitor back here behind me, but hopefully that's uh, <clears throat> that's enough. That's all we need to get started. So I'll let that go. I have a, a sketch already done on the one for the uh, landscape version, but uh, I want to get some clear water on here now. So I'm going to put some water in my palette in some of these wells. I'm going to try to make this first one. We're going to try to make it uh, a fall scene. So we're going to have a few few leaves and stuff in this uh, uh, in, in this uh, composition, uh, as opposed to the landscape, which will be more of a winter scene. But I'm going to start with just wetting this down with clear water, using this big bristle brush. You can hear it scraping. It uh, moves some of that graphite around a little bit too, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, I want to wet this whole thing down and uh, get it ready and get it soaking. This is uh, 
300 pound cold press Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper. So I tend to paint with 300 pound <clears throat> most of the time. I've kind of gotten away from wetting the whole paper down and I end up doing some wet on wet and then I end up doing some wet on dry uh, afterwards. But we're going to try to stick to a, a pattern here that's fairly simple, fairly loose, and fairly quick. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to uh, uh, have a have a long, long running painting here out of either one of these. Um, so now we got that going. Let me get some, uh, we got a few of my colors in here. I'm going to pick up some of this uh, uh, brilliant orange. Since this is going to be a fall color, I'm going to put some of that. I'm making a little well here of uh, of this. These, these, this palette, this is a Sterling Edwards palette, Sterling Edwards brushes, Holbein paints, um, and these, this particular palette has large wells that you can put these colors in. I'm going to put some of this yellow here and we're going to get a, a good bit of that. So I'm, I'm kind of mixing mixing my wells of color. These will stay stay wet because the color flows down. These, these uh, wells are uh, designed in an angular fashion as opposed to flat and they, they keep the color moist, keep it wet, keep a nice bit up there and it always runs to the back so you don't lose it, it doesn't dry out on your deck. When you put it over here in the, uh, the palette, um, the center part of the palette, it tends to dry out. So that's the reason we're doing this. We're giving ourselves some, some colors to work with. Um, and I'm going to then also start with the sky. I'm going to come in with the sky with a little bit of cobalt blue. Um, put it in the uh, Put some in here in this well. There we go. It has a little green in it. I don't know if you can sense that from the uh, from what you can see on camera here, but uh, since that's <coughs> pretty dry, or not dry, pretty wet, I'm going to try to pick up just a little bit. I want to get my uh, paper towel here available and uh, I'm going to start putting in some color here. And it's running. You see how it's running? It's because I paint vertically and uh, it tends to uh, run vertically, right? Which is not unusual. Um, so I'm leaving some areas for some uh, clouds and that sort of stuff. I'm going to put a few more dark things in here. Maybe close that corner off up there. Uh, um, this comes down about to the, put it down to about where the horizon line is over there. Okay, um, that's, we don't have to do too much more to that sky. I may put a little, a few dark things in there to give ourselves a, a look of uh, some uh, shadows under those clouds. Uh, but it's almost a little too wet right now to do that. But I'm, again, I'm just using this big, one and a half inch bristle brush. These are all bristles. Okay. Come back and take just a little more thicker paint. Now, we put that paint in to start with. Um, it was really, really wet. So now if I want to control where the paint goes now, it has to be thicker than what I used before. I don't want as much water in it. So let's see what happens if I come in and put a few darker things coming under here like this. As long as that's wet, um, it will it will merge and blend. It won't leave me a lot of uh, um, cauliflowers or runbacks or whatever you want to call that. Uh, take just a little of my uh, Payne's Gray here. See if I can get just a little, little bit of some of that Payne's Gray in here, maybe. Put a few clouds. This is a kind of a fall day. It's got some blue sky, but it's also got some 
got some clouds that are puffy so okay I don't want to spend too much time in there that's getting it's starting to dry out already I can tell it uh, feel it uh, all right um, let's let that go otherwise if I keep going back in there I'm gonna really mess it up um, I do go back in now there's another technique using with this brush I use this small one I get a little water in it and just kind of dry it out make sure the bristles are damp but when you do that you can give it some of these nice soft edges So I want to soften some of these edges. I don't want them to all be hard. I don't know if you can see how that works, but it's really kind of neat the way it takes some of that hard edge off of these clouds and leaves a few, few hard edges in there. Okay. All right. Um, I see this area around the mountain here. I'm going to try to uh, put just a little little bit of uh, color in there and dry it out and so it can be a softer edge here I want it to stand out because I don't want that to be so obvious that uh, I mean uh, I want this to stand out but I don't want it to be uh, I don't want it to look like I really outlined that mountain which is kind of what I'm doing all right let's try just a few more things I tell you to stay out of here and then I go back in and violate my own concept here okay it's getting dry now the paper's getting kind of dry I have lights on in here and they're uh, they tend to uh, dry this paper out very quickly all right so much for that let's kind of leave that alone now maybe make some of this go like that all right okay that's enough All right, so now, <clears throat> if this is a fall scene, we got a blue sky, a little bit of uh, mountain back there. That mountain has to have a little bit of uh, tone on it so that you can kind of see that it is a mountain. So let's try to put a little bit of, uh, still using large brush here. And we have some more uh, mountain range over here. That's, I'm going to put a little of this uh, violet in it or uh, permanent, permanent violet. Put a little bit in here. Come over here and put some of that in over here. See, that may look too dark to you, but it's going to lighten up. It, it definitely lightens up a lot when you, uh, as it dries. <clears throat> mountain range come over here I'm getting pretty detailed so I don't want to do too much more there I'm going to just sort of stop with that I think let that sort of dry out <clears throat> gives you the impression there's a mountain back there I don't want to beat you over the head with it I don't want to actually spend time drawing it okay that's my background I think I'm going to stop with it I may fix that up up there a little bit I don't like that particular look right here hard edge I'm going to try to soften that out a little bit see if that makes some difference okay stop 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 all right <clears throat> so I've only used these two big brushes so far now I've got some trees back here I've also got this ground that has to be it's going to be white in my other uh, my other painting my landscape version but I want it to be a little bit of a like a ochre color ochre type color uh, I'm going to use this uh, quinacridone gold which is a very beautiful color come in here and see if I can put in some of 
a background in this thing here. I'm just going to throw it in, change the color a little bit <clears throat> so it doesn't all look the same. Add maybe a little bit of the orange in there. I'm just going to go ahead and paint all of that in. Uh, needs to be darker than that or more of it, I guess. Need to be darker back there and sort of. get lighter as it comes forward. Okay. So a few orange spots in there. Change it a little bit. <coughs> Give it a little texture. I can put a few uh, dark, some of my marks to give it some, a little bit of greenery or whatever. I don't know. I'm just sort of ad libbing. I don't really have a uh, a good photograph to go by because I'm changing everything. So, so much for that. Okay, let's look at these trees back here in the back. Um, they're going to have some orange in them because it is a fall scene, so I'm going to make those sort of I get more orange than that. It's a little bit too too wimpy. Like that. Grab a little of my yellow, my some of that in. Okay, so we're just putting in a few background trees here that are pretty far away, and I'm going to balance that out with a few over here on this side. I'm using this flat brush and I'm just tapping it. See how that works? Really, really easy to do. Okay. Come back, let's put a little uh, dark base under those, like there are some um, tree trunks and some growth underneath that's sort of turning brown. <clears throat> so let's see what we can do in here. Again, take paint that's really not not very runny at all. It's, uh, when you see this paint, if you want it to be really runny, when you run your finger through it on the palette, it, it fills back in because it's runny. If you want it to be less runny, if you run your finger through that, it should not fill back in. You see how I did that? So that's a good way to test how runny your paint is if you're trying to get it so that you want to paint over something that's wet. You want to try to keep that from getting too too runny or it'll just sort of merge in with whatever is there and you won't even know you got uh, anything. It just sort of turns a different color. Sometimes people get mud out of that. Okay, that's pretty good for the rest of that background. I should mention if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window and I'll see if I can uh, answer your questions. I'm uh, watching my computer monitor up here on my left side and I have a computer monitor behind me back here that I look at to see what you're hopefully seeing and then uh, so I have to kind of keep both both eyes going here. All right so now we've got this this bank. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this stuff I've got in the palette and see if I can put in this is still pretty wet there. I think this is kind of wet too. I'm going to just put in a quick bank along here to sort of outline the, uh, the water. Get this paper is sort of buckling on me. OK, 
Okay, so this is the back edge of the water. And in here we've got some. So far I'm using these these big brushes that basically don't they're just all bristle. Um, and uh, Flick them up. There's like a thousand little paintbrushes in there because of the, the bristle. Okay, so I'm sort of building the painting from back to front, um, trying to get a lot of this mid value in. Uh, this this pond now is going to be sort of reflective of the sky, so I'm going to take some time and wet it down again with some clear water if you want your your water your uh, water to look like it has a lot of reflectivity in it you sort of want to start this with wet paper so let's see we'll take some of this paint that we had in here, this cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of the uh, violet, um, and it's going to be down here, the, the lighter blue is going to be down here, so from whatever this reflection is down here, I'm going to start my reflection for the sky in this area. And this other up above is going to reflect reflect the bank. Water, you've heard me say this before, I'm sure, has no color. It reflects what's above it, what's around it, <clears throat> what's in it or what's under it. So think about that when you're trying to paint water reflections, that you don't have to match you're not trying to paint the color of water because it has no color. You're painting what's around it or what's above it. Okay, so now I've got that going. Let's go back and put in a few of these trees. I think this is maybe still feels a little wet. It's a little dry there. It's a little wet down here. So I'm going to come in with uh, my half inch flat <clears throat> and get some uh, mixture of some kind of heavy paint here. I want it to be um, sort of these are going to be my darks I guess my darkest so my darkest dark areas. And we're going to come in here and put in a uh, tree that sort of comes up and goes something like that. And we're going to have another one beside it that sort of does something similar. Has a split off and goes over this way. Split off too wide for the bottom of this, so I'll make that a little wider. Okay. Again, these have to be I don't even know where our sun is coming from on this. I haven't really paid that much attention. Oh. So let's put in a few, a few more, like one over here. And he's going to come up and split off into a couple of different forks. Okay, so while well that's going, this is still wet down here, so let's come down and take something and put it down here like this. I'll sort of reflect that one. This other one is going to reflect down here about like this, and something like that. Um, and because this is nice and wet, this is going to be all sort of uh, run together. Um, this one here is going to reflect over this way, like that. 
and the others I don't have in yet, so let's put in a couple more. This is a bigger tree, make him a little fatter. I'm just using uh, Payne's Gray and my uh, Burnt Umber to get these nice dark looking tree trunks and the thing I'm forgetting to do here while I'm doing this is to soften this edge at the bottom. I don't want this to be, I want it to sort of blend in with the ground here. So before it gets really hard on me, take my bristle brush and just sort of feather the bottom of these ever so slightly so they look like they're part of the ground instead of stuck on top of the ground, right? All right, let's put in a couple more over here, get a few more darks maybe. And there's one little one over here. Got water running down to the bottom of my board. Okay, so this is gonna have a big fat sort of a And this is going to have a little bit of a reflection there like that, something like that. All right, we'll put in a few now, a few of these little uh, extra things. Just using this one inch hat flat brush, I'm uh, Touching in some additional branches and that sort of thing. Not too many colors in use here today. All right, something like that. So we're moving pretty quickly here. Um, take my brush and do a little bit of this tickling the bottom of this guy over here a little bit. Put, a, put him something like that. Okay, so those now look like they're setting in the ground. Um, I'm going to get my uh, script liner and come back now and put in a few of these smaller, finer branches. Hopefully these will come out and look much better. If you can see that, that's pretty light. But you need to have some stuff on. I'm not trying to paint every every branch. I'm just trying to give you the impression of trees that have a lot of so I'm going to plan to come back and put a few leaves make it look like it's fall We haven't been doing this for 30 minutes yet. We're really pretty, pretty fast. These big brushes do that, and that's why I knew it was figured it was going to happen because I've done these kind of paintings before where they they go really fast, and then you're done before you know it. <clears throat> okay, so see how that looks. Um, well, I got this brush. I'm going to come along the bottom here and put in some of the uh, bank that runs along this water back here. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of the uh, bank and a little bit of the water here. Run these things together a little bit. Where's my one inch brush? along here and I'll soften some of this up, sort of merge it together. 
the, even these, I'm going to blend these a little bit to give us some look of, uh, giving us more the look of being in the water, right? There's just enough water in this brush to sort of soften that, give us some soft edges and give us some hard edges, that sort of thing. And uh, a little log sitting over here somewhere. I'm going to throw that back in if I can with my brush here. There we go. Okay, let's darken him down, make him fit into the landscape. These should have some things going on. Again, use this big brush to. Uh, I didn't use too many brushes here today on this one. I've just really used sort of uh, don't want those to be too distinct. Okay, now what's what's going to go on with the leaves on these? Because it is a fall scene, I want these leaves to uh, <clears throat> these leaves to look like they're uh, very. I don't know, starting to change color. So I'm going to use this brush this, and just get a few something going on like that using these cad yellow and use a little bit of this uh, brilliant orange and mix together a little bit on there. That brilliant orange really does wonders. So notice how my hand is turning. As I'm putting these on, I'm turning like the clock turns, as if this is the center of the clock. So as I do that, I'm giving you an impression that these things are growing out from the center, which they're supposed to be doing, right? Okay, I don't want to put too many on there. Come back and put some on the other side over here. Put some more yellow in it, maybe. Pick up some of these. Let them run together. This one may have more on it than the other ones. It may be fuller. Hasn't really totally lost its, all of its leaves yet. So let's put those in. And I'm looking at the, the negative shape. I'm talking about this area here. Right? That's a negative shape. I want that to be pleasing. I don't want that to be a circle or a square. I don't want it to look uh, boring. I want it to look interesting. So, kind of playing that there as well. Okay, and put a few darks in there to give ourselves a little more depth. Come back and put just a Okay, um, some of that could come down here in these, in this water down here, I suppose. Put a few things that look like that. Um, I'm not trying to match it like you would with a mirror, but I'm trying to make sure that I have something here that looks like. So I'm taking my brush again and I'm going to give myself just a few swipes like that. <clears throat> and I think that's about all I want to do on this one. Um, I may put just a few more touches of some, maybe some uh, little uh, things that kind of grow at the bottom of these trees, like this, little baby trees or starch or something like that. Maybe there's a few things going on here. Even around this bank, there's probably some things going on here that we could go in. If you put anything in there, make it point toward the focal point, which is really turns out to be these trees more than the, the water. I thought maybe the water was going to be the focal point. It does cover the most area. It's got the most uh, of the square inches of paper, I guess, if you want to calculate that. Uh, but um, that's really about all we have to do with this thing. There's a mountain in the background. I got some good depth. I got some good foreground stuff. And I got these little uh, flicks of interesting things going on here. Um, I could, I could spend a lot of time on this, putting rocks in and putting in some more uh, uh, 
logs or something, but I just want to kind of get this done so we can go on to the next one. But there's a few more darks here on this bank so that it makes sure that it's distinct. Okay. All right. Um, quickly, maybe I can throw my signature on here. It's a little bit dry <coughs> right here, so let's put this in. Okay, so much for that one. All right. <clears throat> That one I'll call done right now. I may I may touch it up a little bit with a few more colors. I don't know, uh, but I want to try to get on to our next painting. We've been going just a little over 30 minutes, <clears throat> so I'm going to take this one off, clean out my palette, uh, change my water, get some more clean water over here, like that. I have another container sitting here, and uh, so I have that done. Get my brushes soaking in the cleaner water and clean out these wells because I'm not going to use this these colors in the uh, upcoming painting. Alright, so you can take a little quick coffee break if you want or bathroom break, whatever you need. I'm going to uh, uh, just clean this palette out and get myself to get this uh, get this taken off if I can remember how I put it on. Okay, there's that one. Um, pull, when you pull the tape off, pull away from the painting. Don't pull it into the painting. You'll, you'll rip the paper and it'll pull that thing right. Uh, you can pull the paper right off and really ruin a good painting by pulling the tape off in the wrong direction. If I pull it down this way, I take a big chance I'm going to ruin that rip that paper. If I pull up, I'm not going to rip that paper. Okay, so there's that water hanging down down here. There's the first one. So I hope you like that. I hope you give that a try. Could have spent more time on those reflections. I kind of glossed over those pretty quickly. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we got them done. All right, let's uh, put this painting aside. And let's get us, uh, I put this paper underneath to kind of protect the landscape version sitting here. So, I've got it ready to go now. All right, I think that's uh, ready to go. It's uh, Excuse me, folks, I had to take a drink of water there. My voice gets, gets raspy. <clears throat> Hope you apologize for my coughing and carrying on here sometimes. I have a bit of a sinus condition that I keep been fighting with all year long for some reason. So it doesn't make me happy, but I still try to get my paintings done for you. All right. Got our landscape ready to go. All right. So now what are we going to do here? Very something very similar, except I want to make this a winter scene. I don't want it to be a... a a fall scene. So we're going to change the colors we use for the sky. I'm going to use some more of this Payne's Gray. Uh, and so I'm going to have a darker, a little bit darker sky. And uh, I have some of uh, this, oh, this red with, uh, that's the wrong red. I want this red quinacridone scarlet. It's going to give me a little bit of the, uh, I want to sort of a, want that mixed with a little bit of my uh, violet so I can have a bit of a reddish violet color as I bring this down. So first thing we do though is what? We wet the, pa wet the paper. So I'm going to get this paper completely wet. And it's got a little color in it, actually, got a little bit of that blue in it from the other one before, over the other painting. Um, stuff kind of stays in these bristle brushes. You have to uh, get some of that paint out. All 
Okay, so I'm guessing we're somewhere in the 30 minute, 35 minute mark. So we'll see how fast this one goes. Since this is going to be more black and white and shades of gray than the other one, uh, I'm not going to use a whole lot of color in it, but I am going to use some colors. Um, I might want to remind you again, I have a link for a survey. I'm taking my 2020 survey, and I want to uh, ask you folks to uh, fill that out if you don't mind. Um, it could really help me plan and uh, decide some of the things I'm going to do next year and some of the things I'm not going to do. Okay, Payne's Gray. It's running, right? Gonna run it down to here and we're gonna sort of stop it. Use your if you use your paper towel and actually blot up the water that's on the paper wherever you want it to stop. Usually it will stop. Sometimes it doesn't, but let's put in a few. So I'll put it down to the horizon line. I'm going to put some colors over it. Okay. So we have some dark. Get some more tone in here. More value. More paint. Thicker paint. Big brushes, big, bold strokes. Let them run. If you were doing this flat, you wouldn't have this running problem that I have. But I've sort of <clears throat> adjusted myself to that and decided that uh, I'm going to have to deal with it. Because I need to have this painting board vertical because of my camera situation. Um, so... Just let that set for a little bit and see how it works. Make a couple of lighter spots in here, maybe. Take our <clears throat> one inch brush and uh, sort of soften. These edges are kind of soft. This one's kind of not quite as soft as I'd like to see it. Maybe put a few more things go through like this. See, every time you go back in there, you start messing it up. So take my word, this is something you don't want to mess with too much. Down here, I want to put just a little bit of that <clears throat> violet color in over this mountain like that. All right. So now, see if I had this on a uh, flat panel, like a pat table, I could tip it up and let some of this run the other way, <clears throat> let these colors merge and mix in a different way. Uh, but I'm going to just sort of let this look like it's like rain or something coming down maybe I don't know got a bright spot right here which is fine I think I'm gonna leave that I kind of like it um, <clears throat> All right, I don't, that looks like a square right there. I don't like that. All right. Step back, take a look, <clears throat> take a breath. Say, okay, let's stop for that. Now all of this, <clears throat> a lot of this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, land here, all this, that paper's almost dry right there right now. 
Um, so I'm going to have just a little bit of a, a little bit of violet in it. I'm just going to go ahead and put that across here right now, kind of wet on dry. Very, very light. This is different, folks. You haven't seen me do something like this. Working only with large brushes, very little work with the uh, small brushes. Um, trying to keep it from running too much. Let's see, this is water, so it's going to have some reflections in it, but I'm going to leave that till later, a little bit later. I'm going to get me some of this uh, Payne's Gray on this brush and see if I can put in with put in a few of these things that look like we've got a mountain back here that's got maybe some snow on it, some areas. bit darker than what we had before the other one and <clears throat> over here this little bit more violet in it less a little more water because it is kind of further back I want to say This is, to me, looking just a little bit too dark. I mean, you can just sort of lighten it up just a touch. Okay, it looks like we got some snow back there. <clears throat> got some trees in here. We got that little rock, uh, not rock, but a log type thing that's kind of sitting right in here somewhere. Put a little indicator of that. So don't forget it. Um, now we're going to try to put in a little bit of the bank. here with some clear water and come across here and wet this down again all the way across and now we're going to just take this <clears throat> we put on it's still wet right start pulling it down pull it right down into that water we just wet this thing all the way down Touch it some spots, leave it open in some spots, but just pull it down. Okay. What do you think? Are you folks liking this? <clears throat> So we've got the mountains. Um, I want to put something here. I want some of these trees to show up over here. So I'm probably going to stick to this <clears throat> Payne's gray with a little bit of a purple in it. It's going to be darker. It's got to be darker than what's behind it. Or what happens? You can't see it, right? Mm. 
his bristle brush makes such neat little tops. You can, I'm sure you can't see that very well, but the tops of them are just little things, little spiky things sticking up. And uh, such a neat idea to paint with these bristle brushes. Something like that. It looks like there's snow out there, right? Let's put some more of this dark on the bottoms. If I let this sort of sort of blend out there in the middle with some clear water and sort of bring it forward a little bit. Okay, I'm making snow. repetitive there. Let's change the color, change the shape or something. Other side, <clears throat> let's make him more purplish, what do you think? So far I haven't put in any trees, have I? It's all purple and black. See how that, I put a whole layer of, a whole line of uh, like violet across there and it all dried out <clears throat> about 20-30% lighter than what I put it on. So let's merge a few of these things, some soft edges here and there. Let this run together. Okay, that's not bad for the uh, background. This little mountain here has got to put something in that looks kind of like this mountain back there. This thing kind of comes down like that, so it's going to go out like this. place down here. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, step back and look at that. Okay, it's just ready for some, some trees and some more shrubs in the middle ground and uh, I think we'll have it. <clears throat> so, I'm going to use my I think instead of using my flat brush. I'm going to see if I can use this this one inch bristle. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to work or not. I may may not like it. <clears throat> see what happens in here. Whoa! Run, run, run. These things hold a ton of water. these I can actually change the type of trees if I want. I don't have to make these deciduous trees. I can make these um, evergreen trees, which I may do. And you do that by just doing these kinds of things like this.
Okay, that's pretty decent. <clears throat> let's put another one in over here. It's getting runny down there. Let's put one right here. Another one over here, maybe. I'm trying to give you a good idea what you can do with just one photograph. Take it, paint it, portrait format, turn around, paint it, landscape format, change the colors, change the mood. Um, it's really Whatever comes to your mind, however you like it. Let's put another couple of trees in here, some small ones, short ones, like this. I have another one here. So I'm still, at this whole thing has been with these large brushes. I haven't even got my small brushes out. Okay, before that gets totally dry over here, <clears throat> I'm going to get my brush and some clean water in it and then just come and massage the base of it so that we end up with some something that looks like a tree and a shadow there. Over, same thing over here. Clean the brush out, damp. Okay, so those trees look like they're really sitting in um, in the snow. Now what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that composition? If I split this painting right down the middle, I've got two, two sides that look identical. That's a no-no. Don't want to make it look like I just copied one side to the other. So I'm going to put some more trees over here. I'm going to put some low bushes. Uh, still not changing my palette colors. I'm just using my violet, a little bit of my uh, red, and my Payne's gray. So we're going to put a few more things over here. Again, these are And a bunch of little trees over here. So let's just sort of fill it in with a bunch of stuff. And again, these are just taps. And <clears throat> now tell me they look glued on, don't they? Make sure these are distinct. Hi, Lindy. Welcome from South Africa. Glad you're here. This is my second painting. So we're just doing a big, big brush study here with only big brushes, bristle brushes. Okay, now if you cut this painting in half, you don't have you don't have the identical painting on both sides. Put a few of these back here. I'm just putting in some 
little more darker values back here to kind of break it up so it's not just one big uh, sort of purple area. Maybe even put a few small trees in the back there. Uh, this looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it alone, I think. Um, I do need to put in a few reflections here, like here and there and this big one there, maybe that guy there. A couple of these. Something like that. <clears throat> uh, just take some water in this brush and just give it a little bit of a brush over so that it looks like it's soft edges in there. I don't want hard edges in this reflection. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's put a little more color over here. Lighten it up in the center. All right, <clears throat> I think maybe I may just take my little uh, script liner here and see if I can put in a few more, a few more details, refine it just a little bit. Maybe put a couple of uh, I don't know little tree-like things here that maybe stuck around, surviving the winter. <clears throat> few flicks of some dark <coughs> grasses that are left over. Um, this tree here sort of needs more of a trunk. It's kind of kind of bland right there. Let's put a trunk in there. This one the same way. See I didn't make a trunk go all the way up. Hit and miss. Okay, some more grasses maybe like this. A lot of Payne's gray here, folks. This is a lot of Payne's gray in this painting. And violet. <coughs> a couple of trunk-like things sticking in here. All right, that sort of helps it a little, I believe. Um, I already showed you how to use this big brush. Yeah, using bristle brushes for watercolor is something that uh, Zoltan Zabo, I don't know if you remember that name, but he's a pretty famous watercolor painter. He uh, started that many years ago and he was one of the first ones to do all, some of, some of his paintings were all done with bristle, bristle brushes. But you get so many, you got a thousand, thousand little paint brushes sitting right there and if you know how to practice and knew how to use them, you can really have some fun with it and really uh, make it look very loose and impressionistic and uh, that's really all you have to do. And uh, we've been going a little over an hour, so I'm going to stop and say this is it for today, folks. Two paintings in uh, less than 60 minutes. And I hope you like that. I hope you give this a try. Um, the images are out on my uh, <clears throat> website. And uh, you can download them. Um, no sketch. Uh, there is a value map out there, but it's not all that useful either. So I'm just trying to do this and, and uh, just be very loose and free. Very uh, um, Using big brushes, you have to be loose and free. You cannot do painting without, with big brushes without being pretty loose. Um, so anyway, um, kind of like the way that looks. Um, okay, I'll zoom back and uh, ask you one more time to please use the link at the bottom of this to, uh, or in my chat window there actually, to uh, go out and answer some questions on my 2020 survey. I'm uh, trying to make some plans for next year and uh, what types of paintings and if you like the way I'm doing this, if you'd like to see me change it. Um, 
I'd like to know that too. Um, and uh, so check out my website, check out my Facebook page. Uh, that survey I mentioned will uh, take you maybe two to five minutes at most. It's just like nine questions and they're all multiple choice, but you can leave me comments which uh, would help me in uh, thinking and planning about what I want to do next year. Um, and uh, check out my Patreon site if you're interested in leaving me a paying for a cup of coffee or something. That's one way to support my work. Also, I have a number of links below here that uh, where I uh, have some little uh, selling websites, I guess they are. Uh, I have an account with uh, Amazon and one with Dick Blick. It's an affiliate site. And if you buy something from there or you check that site out, I get a few pennies for that. So uh, anyway, uh, that's about all I want to tell you today. And uh, until I see you again, it's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>